This monitor from LG is the latest in their Ultra Gear series, this being the 48GQ900, which goes away with two major differences from previous OLEDs featured from LG. And the first being is a 138Hz overclock, giving you 15% more frames out of the monitor itself. And the next biggest thing is the matte coating. And some people are going to absolutely love this. And if you're in an ambient environment that's well lit, you're not going to get those nasty reflections that a gloss coating would otherwise give you. However, there are quite a few other differences to discuss in today's review. And ultimately, of course, is this 48 inch behemoth from LG worth the 1499 USD price tag? Well, there's only one way to find that out. Let's get in to that review. Welcome back to Tech Yes City. If you are a gamer, you want to cut straight into those details. Know if this thing is good. Now on the box, they advertise less than one millisecond response time on the GQ900. And here is where we tested with, of course, coming under that one millisecond, where I can only really test here at 1000 Hertz or 1000 FPS. So any higher than that, I would need a better camera that would be able to read the monitor at 10,000 FPS, for instance, that would allow me to pinpoint the response times with a little bit more accuracy, but as it stands, response times under one millisecond are absolutely phenomenal, given the viewing angles are just as good, even better than IPS, and also given that the colors are even better, in my opinion, than IPS panels. We were looking at the black levels, and this is the most important thing with an OLED, if you're going from, say, an IPS panel, is that the black levels are going to come through so rich if you are, of course, in a dark room. Though that matte coating, as you can see, if I'm just talking to you right now in a well-lit room, is going to help the blacks as opposed to the gloss or no matte coating installed on the monitor at all. The white uniformity on this monitor is literally close to perfect as being perfect gets, at least the sample we've got here. And then looking closer at the pixels themselves with an orange background, just to spot out any cross hatching, there was none visible even when I zoomed in post editing and looking at the footage. So in terms of the response times and the colors, they're absolutely gorgeous. And this is all coupled in with extremely low input lag. What we measured here was under 10 milliseconds, even at 4K. And I decided to test this with both the overclock on and the overclock turned off at 120 Hertz. Now, speaking more of that overclock, this will only work in 8-bit mode. So even though the panel supports 10-bit HDR, if you want to extract the 138 Hertz overclock, then you'll have to turn on 8-bit mode, which is really standard for most games anyhow, but you'll also have to enable VRR, or variable refresh rate, which does work at 120 Hertz, even 10-bit, but it also is required in order to turn the overclock on. And I found this a little bit odd. I don't know what the reason was behind this but when I started measuring at a thousand Hertz this is where it showed a little bit of flickering it was an odd behavior that was coming out on the camera as opposed to turning off the 138 Hertz overclock furthermore looking at this closer when I tried to manually overclock the monitor in the Nvidia control panel the most I was able to get was 135 Hertz but at 135 Hertz I noticed that the flickering did go away however I just couldn't play the games because the OSD kept interrupting and saying that the monitor was now out of range and essentially what must be happening here is the OSD must be pegged to the GQ900 in that they work hand in hand to deliver each other information, but if something's sort of out of range, then it's gonna keep delivering that annoying message, which I couldn't turn off. Though as it stands, the 138 Hertz monitor worked perfectly with G-Sync enabled or having it disabled in the games, depending on how you like to play. Then now it's time to look at some other differences featured on the GQ900, and here's where they've gone away with the standard TV remote, and they've replaced it with this sort of remote that has quick hot buttons and a dial knob, which you do use instead of a D-pad or anything like that. But I will say it is very intuitive. It's very easy and very quick to set things up the way you want it once you get used to it. In the OSD, you have various settings to change going from languages to the input on the sound hot mute, as well as things like changing the individual saturation levels on a particular color band. For instance, if you want more green to pop, you can increase the saturation on the greens. So basically, 
all the settings that you would be used to having on a C9 or a CX OLED, they do exist in this OLED as well. Plus coupled in with two different settings that I've noticed that appear on these OLED. And that is first of all, the black stabilizer, which will help if you're playing a lot of FPS games and you don't like to get confused in dark rooms. I usually test this in CSGO and here's where it made quite a big difference from zero to 100, but I noticed the biggest difference came from going from 55 to 60, where you could see a considerable boost in this area. They're going through the back of the monitor. Here's where they've decided to put RGB on the left and right hand sides, which will give it an ambient glow at nighttime if you want to get a bit of ambient light behind your monitor, where you can change the colors through the whole RGB spectrum, or of course you can put it on cycling. Though another nifty feature they've included on the Ultra Gear is the 192 kilohertz 24 bit DAC, which can extend to powering a pair of headphones directly off the monitor itself. But of course you've got those internal speakers, which honestly, if you are just looking for a good, comfortable pair of speakers, this will do the job. It's not as good as real high-end solutions, but for what's included with a TV slash monitor, it does a phenomenal job of even delivering very good sound for gaming and separating left and right channels. The last feature for the audio is the optical out, so you'll be able to run this from the monitor instead of your PC, or if your PC doesn't have it, then it will simply add that option on. Though in terms of input, you've got three HDMI 2.1s and a DisplayPort 1.4 port as well. If you wanna run that 8-bit 120 hertz 4K only through the DisplayPort, you can do that. The cables are also included. You get the HDMI 2.1 cable and the DisplayPort cable, as well as a USB hub extension port and cable and the ability to run USB ports off the monitor too. And with all those details out of the way, it's time for me to give you guys my personal opinion on this monitor as well as sum up everything and what I like and don't like about the 48 GQ 900. And the first biggest thing for me personally is that matte coating. I think this is what some gamers would have been waiting for and they may have been turned off from buying a previous OLED due to the gloss coating. However, for me personally, this is where I like the gloss coating on the previous LG TVs. I love it to the point where I'm a gloss lover and I've said this over and over in the past throughout the history of Tech Yes City. You're either liking the matte coating or you're liking the gloss coating. You generally go one way or the other and I'm sure the comments section on this video is gonna be pretty much about this main point in particular. So it does come down to personal preference. I would honestly love to see LG offer this in a gloss and a matte flavor. So just put the acronym of M after the 900, so 48GQ900M for matte and 900G for gloss, and the person who's purchasing the monitor can choose for themselves. Though, that's the first point. This one is, I believe it's only gonna come in matte. So gloss lovers will wanna stick to the CX or the C1 or the B9 on the previous OLEDs that are released. But then there's the next big feature and that's the 138 Hertz overclock. Here's where I was having a really good time playing games at 4K with that extra bump. But keep in mind that you will have to probably lower the settings on a lot of games as running this kind of FPS, even on the latest and greatest RTX 3080s, 3090s, 6800 XTs, it still has a hard time getting that amount of FPS, which you'll now have to get 15% more of at 4K. So you're gonna have to play around with the settings a lot to get that sweet spot. But the good thing is it did work fine with variable refresh rate and having this on is a really good feature with the 4K OLEDs, not just the GQ900, but also other LG OLEDs out there. But then we move on to the response times, amazing colors, amazing, and the input lag, amazing. But this 138 Hertz, we're gonna circle back to that because it did have a little problem with the flickering with the 1000 Hertz. Even though I didn't notice it in real time gaming, it was noticeable at the 1000 Hertz. So I would like to see what LG have to say about that and whether it can be fixed with a firmware update and what that has to do. Because if you're paying 1499 USD, you want perfection for gaming, even with that overclock locked in. Then there's also the smart TV capabilities. Since I've been calling this a monitor throughout this review, that's what it is. It's taken away the smart TV capabilities. It's gone with a different remote. Even though the remote does work very well with this monitor, 
I personally prefer having those smart TV capabilities, at least with the CX that I've got in the past, the C9 that I bought off the used market here, they both have exceptionally low input lag, great response times, and they have that extra feature added on. So I don't know why LG went away with that, especially when they decided to stick RGB LEDs on the left and right hand sides and then take that feature away. I would have liked to have had that feature there because I don't always want to have to turn on my computer to watch movies and Netflix. I'd rather just turn that on natively from the TV and keep my computer off if I want to watch TV. But other than that, the gaming features they have added in, like the black stabilization feature, as well as adding a crosshair manually over the top, and also having the ability to have an OSD for FPS, is some good features that gamers will appreciate. So they have targeted this more towards a gamer, but in terms of the inherent OLED tech itself, it was good on previous OLEDs. It's gotten a little bit better this time around, but it's still in that realm of amazing. So you're not gaining a whole lot more by going with the 48GQ900 if you, especially if you already have an LG C series, for instance, or a B series. Though the last question on your mind before you get on out of here would be with OLED itself. You've heard about the risks of burn-in and here is where I've used a LG OLED as a PC monitor. I've used it as a TV for years and years. And when it came to a PC monitor, I found the CX, that was the one that I used with the most time, that did a phenomenal job. It had no burn-in at the end of the usage period, but I did use a B7 as a backup monitor, and that did start to get some burn-in issues after a bit of time. So here's where LG have progressed over the years to make sure that burn-in isn't a problem, providing you've got the right settings on. And this is where it's got the auto dimming feature. Say for instance, you accidentally leave your OLED on, it'll just automatically either turn it off or it's got the auto dimming feature to stop the brightness from coming in as hard on that static image. Then there's screen shift, which will just shift the pixels a very slight amount. It's unnoticeable to the human eye, especially while you're gaming. And this will of course preserve your OLED too. So I recommend having both those settings on and enjoy the years of gaming that this monitor will provide. Then now we're going on to the last question, the final one, and that is, is it worth $14.99 USD? And here's where I'm gonna say it depends on you as an individual. If you've watched this review and this monitor is giving you all the features you want and then some, then it's probably gonna be worth it for you. For me personally, it's a no, because I've already got the CX and in Japan here, I've got the C9. I prefer these over the GQ900 and also managed to pick them up a few hundred dollars cheaper, and in the case of the C9 off the used market, quite a lot cheaper than this one right here. So it all depends on what your preferences are as an individual. Do you want the 138 hertz? Do you want the matte coating, especially the matte coating? And do you want those features, the gaming features like black stabilization versus say losing out on the smart TV and the gloss coating? And is it worth that $40.99? That's gonna be up to you. Anyway, guys, with all that information aside, I hope you enjoyed today's review. If you did, be sure to hit that like button. Also let us know in the comment section below what you think of the GQ900 and its matte coating. I'm pretty sure the comment section is gonna be filled with matte versus gloss, and it all depends on you as an individual and what your eyes like, and of course, more importantly, what your usage conditions are. And we've also got here the question of the day, which comes from Shinobi1, and they ask, ask the seller if it was undervolted, really? And of course, they will tell you the truth, I guess. So this question comes from the recent video we talked about with the RTX higher-end cards being relatively overpriced even with the price cuts that Nvidia have brought to the market. And I said in that video that I buy from miners, I have bought a lot from miners in the past, and I spoke about the things to look out for if you wanna get a good deal off the used market, especially from an ex-crypto miner. And here's where from personal experience, when I talk to a crypto miner who's offloading all their gear, I'm able to tell if they've taken care of those cards just by asking them questions like, did they undervolt the cards? And their response is gonna pretty much tell me everything I need to know. If they didn't undervolt the cards, they're just not gonna know the settings that those cards were run at, and they're gonna have no idea. And so with that, I'm not gonna buy those cards if the seller is just essentially telling a load of crap. As well, of course, the ultimate decision to be made is just to look at the cards themselves. Do they look like they've had a really harsh life or do they look like they've been taken care of? With those two things in mind, 
you should be able to pick up really good deals, especially with what's around the corner and waiting to come. Hope that answers that question. And if you stayed this far and you're enjoying that Tech Yes content, be sure to hit that sub button, ring that bell to get the juicy vids as soon as they drop here at Tech Yes City. And I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out for now. Bye. Taking me back to the start